Wow, who's Lee? Well, today I am a leadership coach and management trainer, and that's what I am doing in the world today. And once you discover what that purpose is, getting up in the morning is easy because work isn't work. Work is fulfilling because it's what you're here to do. Work. I think when I when I made the transition from my 30s into my 40s, I now go to bed at like 9, <laughs> 8, 30. <laughs> Growing up, my father was a, um, he was an expat. He, he traveled all over the world and sometimes took us um, to these places. And, you know, I remember we lived in England. I remember going on holiday with the family to Spain and just a cooling holiday. And my dad worked for an oil company, actually, in, um, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, oil hydrographic projects, OHP, I think it was called. Anyway, we're on holiday in Spain, and we get back. I could hear the conversations around the house going. You know, my dad said, "You know that that hotel we stayed in in Spain? It didn't have a windsurfing school. We're going to move to Spain, and I'm going to start a windsurfing school." He said, "Quit his job, moved in." I didn't know it at the time. But as I've grown older, I thought, what, what, you know, what he taught me is, you know, the world is your oyster. You know, if you want to do something, there's no reason why you can't do it just because other people. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I have a special guest today, Lee Duncan Tucker. He's here in the Middle East. I know that it looks like you've been through the world. But let's hear it from him. A new story for us today. Great mind, great stories. Good morning, Lee. Good morning, Daniel. How are you? Where are you now? I am in my home in Dubai. Dubai. OK. Yes. How, is the, how is the weather outside? It's hot, and I've just realized I've forgotten to put the air conditioning on this morning. So it, it's too loud, though, to have on, but I could have cooled it down before we started. So I'm going to get hot during our conversation. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a good excuse for you to sweat, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Don't worry, it's going to be uh, uh, just like relax, nice questions. Cool. So let's start with um, who's Lee? Wow, who's Lee? Well, today I am a leadership coach and management trainer. And that's what I am doing in the world today. And I'm just really getting set up with that. I left my corporate job uh, just over six months ago to try the world out on our own terms. So myself and my wife, we lived in, uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia in Riyadh for seven years. And we've always, both of us have had this dream to work for ourselves. And at the end of last year, we thought, why don't we just give it a try? And that's how we ended up in Dubai, doing what, what, what we love to do. Oh, all right. It's interesting. It's just like a, a new click in life. Why not? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. New adventure. You were telling me that you have read something today. Yeah, I was. Uh, you mentioned just before we we jumped on the call. You know, how's how's life? Um, and I do like my um, old philosophers. And I was reading this quote from Marcus Aurelius. Um, and I was also listening to a podcast this morning when I was dropping the, the kids off at school. And it was I can't remember his name, but it was a gentleman, and he was talking about you know. When you get up in the morning, no matter how you're feeling, if someone asks how you're doing, say terrific, even if you're not. And I thought, okay, that's interesting. And he went on to tell the story. Uh, then, then I got home, and I, I was I always like to do a bit of reading philosophy and things like that. And I'm reading this quote by Marcus Aurelius, and I'll, I'll read it to you now. It says, at dawn, when you have trouble getting out of bed, tell yourself, I have to go to work. As a human being, what do I have to complain of if I'm not doing what I was born for, the things I was brought into the world to do? Or is this what I was created for, to huddle under the blankets and stay warm? 
So you were born to feel nice. Instead of doing the things and experiencing them, don't you see the plants, the birds, the ants, the spiders and bees going about their individual tasks, putting the world in order as best they can, and you're not willing to do your job as a human being? Why aren't you running to do what your nature demands? You don't love yourself enough, or you'd love nature too, and what it demands of you. There you go. Wow. <laughs> Love that was powerful, that. powerful for 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your perception about it? If you my know, perception? Yeah. Yeah, my perception of this is, um, I, you know, I believe we're all here to for a purpose. We were brought into this world for a purpose. And once you discover what that purpose is, getting up in the morning is easy. Because work isn't work. Work is fulfilling because it's what you're here to do. Work becomes the thing when work becomes the thing that you love. There's no more snooze alarm. There's no more, oh, I don't want to face the day. You, you yay. <laughs> another day, another day to do what I love. But I'm not saying that is me every morning. <laughs> Far from it. <laughs> Are you a morning person? This is a really interesting question because I used to be a night owl. I used to stay up till one, two, three o'clock in the morning and I could get up at five, six o'clock, no problems. I think when I, when I made the transition from my 30s into my 40s, I now go to bed at like nine, <laughs> eight, <laughs> 30, <laughs> nine o'clock. On a good day, it's like 9.30 in the evening. And... Um, and then my morning, my mornings, I, I would say I want to get up, but I can't always get up. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I thought you would say I'm just like 5 a.m. club, you know, member. <laughs> no, no. When you, when, when you read all these, um, you've got to get your morning routine to be successful. You've got to have a good morning to, you should get up, do some exercise, meditate, and the like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay let's go to one thing like what okay. story what story has made a plea who he is today a father a coach an expat tell us a story that has substantial impact on your life yeah okay i mean you know when i was growing up my father was a um, he was an expat he he traveled all over the world and sometimes took us um, to these places and you know I remember we lived in England I remember going on holiday with the family to Spain and just a two-week holiday and my dad worked for an oil company actually in um, in Abu Dhabi uh, oil hydrographic projects or HP I think it was called anyway we're on holiday in Spain and we get back and I could hear the conversations around the house going you know my dad said you know that that hotel we stayed in in Spain, it didn't have a windsurfing school. We're going to move to Spain and I'm going to start a windsurfing school. He's going to quit his job, move to Spain, start a windsurfing school. But we didn't just, you know, pack up and fly. He bought a bus, uh, a public transport bus, and converted it into a motorhome. Oh. And then we, we drove to Spain, <laughs> through France, over the Pyrenees, and we lived in a campsite for about a year, and then we moved into a small apartment. We were only there for two years. Wow. Uh, another, another, another time, he, he went to become a shrimp boat captain in Florida. So we all moved up to Florida, and he was a shrimp boat captain. Ooh. And I didn't, I didn't know it at the time. But as I've grown older, I thought, what, what, you know, what he taught me is, you know, the world is your oyster. You know, if you want to do something, there's no reason why you can't do it. Just because other people say, you know, you have to be settled and you have to have a home. And, you know, you have to do all these things. If you want to, you can do those things. That, that was one of the first things. I think the second thing which led me here, because, you know, eventually my mom and dad divorced. I think my mom liked a home. My dad liked to travel. So eventually they divorced and we settled back in England. And I, I kind of went off the rails a little bit as an older teenager, 
I got into the wrong crowd and basically just lived to party, you know, in uh, bills, electricity. I, we don't pay bills here. Rent. I don't want to pay the rent. Everything was about going out and partying with me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I, I believe that we are like, not one story, a bunch of stories that created the character that we are today. Yeah. And yes. uh, I believe that, yeah. I just like believe that you have those moments in life that you were very challenged that mm. that made the like um uh, changing directions in, in your life. I yeah. remember the other day we were talking about uh, door to door selling, for example. <laughs> yeah. And that yeah. was a, a, a big part of your life that made like I have to do it thing. Uh, that was really a, a turn. Yeah, that was really the turning yeah the point for me that was uh, that party lifestyle that was what redirected my life to a more productive um more productive way but you're absolutely right all the experiences we have in life every single one has an impact on us i love the quote by jim Rohn, and he says you know everything affects everything else you know the conversations you have the your attitude when you drive to work everything affects your whole being um, but yeah, with the, with the daughter or Sally, I remember, I, I think I had three jobs at the time. I was flipping burgers uh, late at night. I had an office, I was an office junior, um, which was basically the tea boy, you know, go get me a coffee, get me a tea, and I'd run around in my little tray and deliver envelopes. You know, that was in the days when the office was full of filing cabinets with paper in. <laughs> and, uh, was, it, was it worth it? Well, now you're looking back, was it worth it to have three jobs are they you froze that Daniel sorry mate I, I, I was saying was it worth it now you're looking back at your history and this story today like three jobs a day was that mm. worth it it was worth it it was worth it because one of those jobs was like you just said door to door selling and I, the reason I, I had those jobs was because I needed the money not just to pay for, for my party lifestyle, but also to pay the bills. You know, we had uh, debt collectors calling the house and, you know, we were going to get the electricity cut off and things like that. So I was selling these books uh, door to door. And if you've ever done door to door or experienced any form of cold calling, you know, you will know it's like a cruel punishment, knock on the door. And it's always at dinner time. Why do they send you out door to door selling at dinner time? Because people, are just, they just want to sit in front of the TV, relax, eat the dinner. Hi, would you like to buy a book? <laughs> and that's what I... <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> I, think I, did. <laughs> I don't know what, why I did it at um, So it was, it's in England, it's raining. Of course, it's raining. We're in England, it's dark. And everyone's missed the There was a, a small team that went out with us. And they'd had enough. They were huddled together out of the rain under a bus shelter. But I had to keep going. I just had to keep going because I needed the money and desperately needed the bang, bang, bang. Go away. Go away. <laughs> Some of the words, which I won't say on your podcast. <laughs> um, but eventually I knocked on this one door and this lady answered. Uh, Dawn Bolt. And I gave her the spiel. Hey, my name's Lee. We're selling these books. Would you be interested in buying a book? Here's our little catalogue. And she started asking me these questions. You know, why, why are you doing this? this? What's it for? And I explained, well, I need the money and I've got bills to pay. And she just kept asking me these questions. Well, what, what, what else do you want to do with your life? And no one had ever asked me these questions. Anyway, I'm beginning to think, what's going on here? Are you going to buy a book? And then she said, wait a minute, let me get my husband. And now I'm thinking, well, hang on. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. And she says, I'll come in. And I was like, okay, I, I, I'll come in. <laughs> but uh, I don't know where this is going. <laughs> and her, her husband came in and started asking me all these questions about what I was doing with my future and what I wanted. And I was like, well, what's going on here? <laughs> I, could, I could see from where I was. What's that? What's happening? <laughs> I was hoping the next question wasn't going to be, would you like to come upstairs? But no, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, 
<laughs> he, was invite, he was inviting me to join a, um, a network marketing business, basically. You know, he was looking to recruit people. What that business came with was a training program. And he gave me his business card and he gave me a book. And that book was The Magic of Thinking Big by David J. Schwartz. Anyway, I call it a night. They bought a book. They got my money. I went home. And about two weeks later, I found that book and started skimming through it. And I was hooked. And what that book did was just open my eyes a little bit. Because, you know, before that, we people tend to go through lives just accepting what they have and what they've been given. You know, I've got this job. It's a good job. I'll settle for this good job. Life may not be perfect, but it's comfortable. Mm. Mm. And this book just, this book kind of started to open my eyes and said, you know, if you want more out of life, if you want to change the direction of life, you can do that. Anyway, I called him back and I got friendly with him and he took me to my first seminar, my first motivational seminar with motivational speakers. I, start, I started to buy one book, one positive book every month. And that was the moment when my life didn't change a lot, just gradually started to change and grow and develop. Um, and I started to get better jobs and I was able to uh, you know, get a few promotions in the office and things like that. But if it wasn't for those having those three jobs, if it wasn't for being out there in the rain and knocking on those doors, I would never have got that book. And it's like you say, every moment now plays a part in it. And it wasn't just that, you know, one of the biggest parts yeah. in, in my life for me was meeting my wife and, and she's just awesome and she's Together, we've managed to raise two beautiful girls uh, or in the process of raising them. Um, so it all plays a part. Everything matters. Everything we do in life matters. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, that was one of the big, big things that so, changed me. Here's a question. Hmm. Are you happy? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I am happy. Yeah. Because I read things like that Marcus Aurelius quote. And I think... And, you know, sometimes you fall in and out of practice, but being grateful, you know, I'm here in Dubai. It's a beautiful place to live. I get to meet extraordinary people like you. And I have got so much to be grateful for. Is it where I want to be? Maybe not. But I certainly appreciate these moments now. Um, this morning I didn't, because this morning I got up on the wrong side of the bed and like, my foot, my, my heel on the end of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it happens. You know. Yeah. But I think as, uh, overall, yeah. Um, let's give another direction. Yeah. As a leadership coach, mm. what what are you after? What's your message? What um, uh, value are you adding to the leadership world? Yeah, my, my message to the leadership world is really based on developing people and what I want to do because what happened to me is I had some great coaches and my starting point was you know minus minus 10 that was my starting point in the in the corporate leadership world I was minus 10 and then I was a t-boy and then I was a fi filing things and and slowly I rose up. And my message is that whatever you, if you think you've got a, if you've got an idea that you want to do something more than you're currently doing, you can do it. Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. And the way we do that is by helping people, helping each other. And that really is the ultimate message that I want to get out there, that we are all capable of doing amazing things mm -hmm. we don't we don't do it alone we do it with other people and my message to leadership is that you know i see leaders all the way we've got this technology and that technology and this technology is going to revolutionize everything well actually it's not it's not your mm -hmm. people that use that technology will revolutionize everything and it's really allowing leaders to really understand that message you can't do it on your own and your job as a leader is to make other leaders is to build them up help them progress into the world 
I don't know if that answered your question there. There was like 20, 10 answers to one question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> smart answer to be like a comprehensive one. Mm. Okay, what's your dream of being a coach? Why coaching? So many coaches in the world makes mm. what makes you want to be one of them? Because I went through that process and I understand the impact that it had on my life. I went through having a mentor and a coach and someone who held me accountable to a higher standard. And yeah, there are loads of coaches out there in the world. It seems like everyone's a coach now, especially when you look scrolling yeah. on LinkedIn. <laughs> but it's not only that, the, the coaches are the coaches that coach coaches to be coaches. It's <laughs> 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 like, oh my God, oh, I am a life coach. No, I am a herb coach, or I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> they come up with like fancy things these days. Yeah, and, and you know what? I've got no doubt that many, many of them are adding tremendous amounts of value yeah. uh, in, into the world. I've got no doubt about that. Um, because to me, it's just such a worthy cause um, to share knowledge, you know, and I want to help people achieve great things in life. That's that's my dream of, of being a coach and a, and a leadership consultant. Cool. Enough about seriousness. Let's go back to get some fun. How about that? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Here's a question. Again, a question. Mm. Okay. Imagine this. Mm. I love this question so much, so I enjoy hearing it. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm scared now. <laughs> it's a rainy mm. night. You're driving down the road, and it's okay. heavily drain, uh, raining, you know. And then you barely can see the white person are working so fast. And you only have one seat plus the driver. Okay? Mm -hmm. No one outside but the wind and the cold and stuff. You know, it's very dark. Mm -hmm. And at one minute, you pass by a bus station. And so three people there, standing there, and you recognize one of the three is your best friend, whom you owe him so many big favors. Okay. Second one is a very old lady, and she mm. seems she needs some help, like getting to the hospital. And third one is the lady of your dream. Okay. You die for a moment with her. Okay. What would you do? Oh my goodness, man. You know, Daniel, this, you don't ever tell me there would be a question about this. Okay, well, I've, I've already found it. So let's do it. Let's start. <laughs> Enjoy it. I have already found the woman of my dreams. So she's out. She's gone. I've got, I've got uh, that one. Despite the actual life, just like live this moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my best friend, I owe him a favor. An old lady that needs to go that needs yeah. to go to a hospital. Yeah. And you see, I'm a, one seat plus the driver. I am I am a I am a sucker. So I don't know, maybe I'd get my best friend to drive the old lady to the hospital and I'd get a hotel with the woman of my dreams. <laughs> you got the trophy. You got the trophy. That's the perfect answer, actually. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm so happy. I'll conclude here. <laughs> so you've heard the question before. No, I've no, never no, heard the question before. No, and they scare me those questions because I'm like, I don't, I don't know this old lady. Who is she? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Lee, okay. hobbies, activities that bring you life, yeah. joy, that that yeah. makes you happy. Yeah, so, you know, I always liked messing around with some music production, electronic music. Oh. Um, and I've got a guitar sitting over there. And you know what? I've not touched them for about a year. Because oh. when, when we made the decision to um, make this move, uh, and start, you know, leave the corporate world and start out on our own. It was all hands to the deck. It was, no, we've got to knuckle down now. So I don't have a great amount of time for my hobbies. You know, I stay up quite late at night producing content, 
making connections, having conversations with people, and trying to build a business. And my wife's doing the same. You know, she's in her doing her psychology degree. So any time that we do get tends to be spent with our little girls. You know, we'll go to the beach. At the moment, they're our hobbies. We're, we've got kind of two modes at the moment. It's business time and family time. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, one of, one of my favourite things to do is I love the ocean. So I suppose my big hobby at the moment would be going to the beach and swimming in the ocean. And every Tuesday, we drop the kids off. My wife and I drop the kids off at school in the morning. And we drive to the beach, to Camp Beach in Dubai. Um, we park the car and we just go for a little swim. And that is so nice to be out there in nature and, you know, feel your feet on the sand and get in the water, have a swim around. You know, it's like a 30-minute drive there. We spend about 30 minutes in the water and then a 30-minute drive home. So it's a long time just for that moment. So, it, you know, it's got no kids there. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, time. <laughs> yeah, that, that is a, at the moment, you know, that's that's our time. Yeah, that's our time together. Let's say you have the mic and we're concluding mm -hmm. now, wrapping it up because uh, we're running almost out of time. Okay. I would love to hear from you. What mm -hmm. would you like to say to those people who are stuck? Mm -hmm. They know they have potential and they're just like, this is why my job and I have to wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. What else can we do? Um, um, or let's say um, the mic is yours. Okay. So, what message do you like to deliver the world? So I think the, the, the best message I can give was the message that I learned. And, you know, from that point when I was knocking on that door and I got given that book to read, that was almost 25 years ago. And my starting point, like I said, was minus 10. And it took me 25 years to finally learn enough, read enough, know enough, be brave enough, be humble enough to know that I didn't know everything I needed to know before I really, you know, my wife and I made that big decision to start out on our own. Was it worth it? Absolutely worth it. So my message would be, you know, I'm going to tell a story here. My, one of my favorite motivational speakers, Les Brown, and he tells the story of the Chinese bamboo tree. Oh, the Chinese, the Chinese, the, Ch the Chinese bamboo tree is a particularly hard nut to crack. And once it's planted in the ground, it takes five years of watering nurturing of fertilization before it breaks through the ground five years but once it breaks through the ground in a space of five weeks it grows 90 feet tall yeah I love that speech it's such it's such, yeah it's such a great speech and he is the man and that is just talking about consistent small action you know a lot of people say if you want to make it big in this world you've got to take massive action and, and i think that scares people because i don't even know what massive action is but what i did was i kept reading a book if i just read a book a day if if someone has an idea that they want to do something different than what they're doing buy a book on it look google it read some free free resources but just try and do something no matter how small every day Write it down and read that vision or that dream that you've got every day. And then don't quit. Just keep learning something. Keep trying something every single day and be persistent. Just keep going. Don't quit. And, you know, I, I quit many times, but the thing was I carried on. Because once that seed's planted in there that you are capable of doing anything you want to in this world, it never goes away. And then you really need this life of quiet frustration, you know, because it's always there in the back of your mind. What if I did that? What if I did? So don't think of it in terms of massive action, just something little that you can do every single day, every day, and then just don't quit. And you will get there eventually. Love that's my message. Yeah. Love it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the wrap up. 
it was a wonderful moment, morning with Lee today. And uh, thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much, Daniel. It's been a pleasure. I've had a blast. Thank you, my friend. Enjoy the beach next time. <laughs> I will do. <laughs> Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.